so that literal meaning is still there. Satan here is the enemy. Mm -hmm. Now, whose enemy is he? Mm -hmm. And that's 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 um, probably something that I think uh, Christianity today departs from Judaism. Christianity tends to see Satan as God's enemy. Mm -hmm. Here's the way it was described to me by um, by a gentleman who was a prayer warrior. Mm -hmm. This was a man who used to travel all over the United States. And he would blow his shofar, mm -hmm. and he would and he would walk and do prayer walks. I said, "Well, what, what's the prayer walk, and why are you blowing the shofar?" He would actually go to the highest place in every county in the United States, and he'd gone to hundreds of counties. Mm -hmm. and he would blow his shofar, and I said, well, "What is the function of blowing the shofar there?" And he explained to me, and I'm not saying all Christians believe this, this is what he believed. He explained to me that Satan is gathering forces for the final showdown with God. Mm -hmm. And you can be on Satan's team or you can be on Jesus' team. You can choose sides. Mm -hmm. And Satan rules this world. And so as he travels around blowing the shofar and walking in prayer, like he'll literally map out the streets and walk up, make sure he covers every street and pray as he's praying. And he's proclaiming that territory for God against Satan mm -hmm. so that when the final showdown comes, mm -hmm comes, God has more territory and more, more minions, more soldiers. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, to me, it's um, definitely an alien concept mm -hmm. because as I see it in the Tanakh, Satan is not God's enemy. Satan works for God. You see that in Job. He appears before God, and of course, he's trying to make trouble. He's going to and fro in the earth. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, yeah, Job only uh, listens to you because you're good to him. Let's, l let me harm him, right? Satan wants to cause trouble. He wants to cause trouble to men, not to God, to humans. Mm -hmm. The first time Satan is, can we talk about the first time Satan appears in the Tanakh? Absolutely. Are we ready to jump to that? Okay. So um, the first time Satan appears in the Tanakh is Numbers 22, 22. And there it's really interesting. Uh, uh, it's interesting on so many different levels. <laughs> uh, um, I'm sure we talked about it in Torah Pearls, but mm -hmm. let's just briefly look at it again. The first time Satan appears in the Tanakh, or that is the word Satan, referring to a spiritual entity, because often Satan is, is um, um, a human, mm -hmm. right? It says that God raised up a certain person as a Satan against Solomon, mm -hmm. right? That was an enemy, an actual adversary. Mm -hmm. uh, but the first spiritual one is Numbers twenty two twenty two, and the anger of God burned uh, because Balaam went, mm -hmm. and, in, and Malach Yehovah stood in the way, Satan lo, as a Satan against him. Yes. And some people have said every time it has the phrase Malach Yehovah in the Tanakh, it's a specific angel. Um, I won't get into that right now. That's what, they that's what some people have claimed, mm -hmm. that it's a specific angel because it, it, really you would translate Malach Yehovah as the angel of Yehovah, um, or you could translate also as a certain angel of Yehovah as based on the principle we just talked about. Mm -hmm. um, but Malach Yehovah stands as a Satan against him, against who? Against, against Balaam, mm -hmm. right? So the one who pulls out the sword and the, and the donkey tries to avoid it and he, and he hits the donkey, that is described as a Satan. Mm -hmm. um, now, who is he? He's not God's Satan. And then again, Numbers 22, 32, mm -hmm. he says, the angel says, Hine anochi atzati le Satan. Behold, I have gone out as a Satan, mm -hmm. right? So, so um, this Satan is not, uh, God's enemy, he's actually man's enemy. He's there to test man, mm -hmm. to incite man to sin. Mm -hmm. uh, that's actually one of the really interesting uses of the word Satan in the Tanakh, mm -hmm. if, if we can look at that. Okay, 2 Samuel 24, and there we actually won't see Satan, interestingly. All right, 24.1, and then we're going to look at, we're going to compare that with... Um, with uh, First Chronicles twenty one one, mm -hmm. which tell the exact same story about David counting the people of Israel, mm -hmm. and verse twenty four one of Second Samuel says, uh, the anger of Jehovah continued to burn against Israel, and he incited David against them, saying, "Go count Israel and Judah." Mm -hmm. Who's the he here? Pretty clear in the context, it's Jehovah, or you could say it's the anger of Jehovah, maybe personified, but it's Jehovah. First Chronicles twenty one one. So you could translate it, a Satan stood against Israel, and he incited David to count Israel. Mm -hmm. So who stood against Israel in 1 Chronicles 21-1? Mm -hmm. Satan. Mm -hmm. But in 2 Samuel 24-1, it's Yehovah is inciting Israel. Mm -hmm. And what's going on here? First of all, it's a play on words. 
the word to incite is vayaset, mm-hmm. which is from a different root, but it sounds like satan. Mm-hmm. And so First Chronicles 21.1 is explaining to us essentially mm-hmm. that God in, uh, tested or incited David, mm-hmm. uh, basically put him into a test mm-hmm. uh, because, he, because he had this anger against Israel. And how did he do it? He sent his pit bull, <laughs> a Satan, Satan. And so, so it's and, and I actually, we we actually have a um, uh, someone we know that this this was explained to them, and they misunderstood. They thought is Nehemiah saying that Satan is God? No, <laughs> Satan is God's angel that he's using for this particular purpose yeah. to incite Israel, mm. and that's I don't think that's contrary to what we read in in the Gospel of Matthew, both in Hebrew or Greek or in Luke, so can right? You- can, can, can in other you... words, Satan, Satan here isn't coming, the devil, yeah. the diabolos, yeah. the Satan, a Satan, whichever one it is, mm. isn't coming here out of his own power mm. to test Yeshua. Quite the contrary. It says, then Yeshua was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Mm-hmm. And then Luke 4, 1, Yeshua, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Lo- Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. Mm-hmm. Right? So, so it's not inconsistent. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the same message there that this is something that the Holy Spirit, that God, you know, I would understand Holy Spirit as um, the way you experience God. Um, let's not get into that whole theology for now. We will at some point. But um, uh, it's God Himself who's bringing mm-hmm. Yeshua to be tempted here, mm-hmm. or the Holy Spirit that's bringing Yeshua to be tempted here by the devil. So the devil's not like has his power, you know, uh, uh, independent of God. Mm-hmm. He does not have that power. So can you do us a favor? For those yeah. that are listening, this is one of the things I used to love about the tap yeah. tap. I used to love this. Yeah. Okay. Can you do us a favor? Can you take yeah. that three letter root for Satan and give us the first yeah. time that those three letters show up in the Tanakh? And I think it's going to be sometime in Genesis, I think around ah, the issue so of the well. So it appears in, uh, yes. Yeah, so, so there's a, uh, it's actually, that's actually really interesting. Yeah. So we have Satan as a verb, Satan as a noun. And then we have sitna, which can mean enmity, mm-hmm. or in one case, it might mean accusation. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's this beautiful passage in Genesis 26. Mm-hmm. And, and what I love about it, 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 it's a very mundane passage, right? It's, it's, uh, it's about a quarrel between Isaac and these uh, Philistine um, shepherds. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he digs these different wells. And verse 18 says, Isaac dug and knew the wells which had been dug in the days of his father Abraham, and which the Philistines had stopped up after Abraham's death. And why'd they stop them up? Because there's a limited amount of water and a limited amount of grazing area. They don't want these other sheep coming in and, and grazing on the same area where they're grazing. Mm-hmm. It goes on, he gave them the same names that his father had given them. But when Isaac's servants digging in the, in the brook found there a well of spring water, the herdsmen of Grar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, the water is ours. Mm-hmm. He named that well Esek because they contended with him. In Hebrew, it's a play on words, Esek, because he tasku, they had contended with him. So the first one was called Esek. And when they dug another well, they disputed over that one also. So he named it Sitna. And it doesn't tell us why he named it Sitna, <laughs> right? It says Yarivu, they, they, they quarreled, they uh disputed, they had a dispute with him, they called it sitna, and sitna means enmity, or or hatred, or enemy, from the word enemy, satan, right? So he called it, there was a well called sitna. Mm-hmm. Is that a well you would have wanted to drink, uh, have a drink from, <laughs> the well of sitna? <laughs> but why did, why did I that, ask you to do that? I'm talking about yeah. that three-letter root of that word, yeah. uh, sitna, and the three-letter root of the word mm-hmm. satan. Um, and the reason I'm yeah. asking you that question, to look at that, yeah. Is I'm still back to starting out. Your cousin says, "Okay, the Satan." The understanding of what the word means, mm. being adversary, uh, one who accuses, yeah. one who stands against. Um, it, it, it seems like that's. I mean, that's certainly the Jewish understanding of who the Absolutely. adversary or what the well, adversary that's linguistically is. Linguistically, what it means. And so, imagine this: if 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 you went today and there was a well named uh, Sitna, and you knew it was from the root of the word Satan, you probably wouldn't want to drink to it if drink from it if you were a good Christian, because you might think. I mean, they literally have a phrase: "Speak of the devil, and he will come." Right? Yes. Um, and and so, what we can see here is when he's calling this well Sitna, there's no concept in his mind whatsoever that oh, well, this will bring a, a certain angel that causes trouble called Satan. Right. Right. He's not afraid of Satan. Right. 
He's calling us seat not not because of something spiritual, mm -hmm. but because of something very physical and and mm -hmm. and and immediate. Mm -hmm. That there was a quarrel, a fight, and there was an en enmity over this well. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just read the last one. He moved from there and dug in another well, and they did quarrel over it. So he called it Rechovot, mm -hmm. which means broad uh, and wide. Mm -hmm. Uh, saying, now at least Jehovah has granted us ample space to increase in the land. And really, he has broadened our space to increase in the land. Mm -hmm. And this isn't here in the passage. I'm reading now into the passage what the rabbis read into the passage. They said these, these three wells uh, we could take as a metaphor for the first temple for which they fought over us, the second temple which was destroyed by an enemy. And when we build the third one, there'll be ample space and we'll increase in the land. Uh, and in fact, the rabbis would say maybe this is prophetic, mm -hmm. but they understand that's not the original context and meaning when it was spoken of by, by Isaac, but it's a beautiful kind of mm -hmm. um, what we call drasha or homily mm -hmm. that you can uh, uh, explain or talk about based on the passage. Mm -hmm. um, if you were to say, well, this proves there'll be three temples. No, you've missed the point. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So getting back to Satan, Satan means enmity. We have another use of the word sitna, which appears in a much later period, mm -hmm. and that is in Ezra 4.6. Mm -hmm. um, Ezra 4.6, in the reign of Ahasuerus, at the start of his reign, they drew up a sitna against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. These are the enemies of Israel. They don't want the Jews to rebuild the temple, so they draw up, uh, and it says, katvu sitna. They, drew, they wrote a sitna. Sitna is a letter of, of enmity, mm -hmm. but it may also at this point have, the, have taken on the meaning of accusation, mm -hmm. or that might be part of the connotation here. I Meaning because the letter wasn't just a letter from an enemy, it was saying, hey, these guys, you can't let them build the temple, they'll rebel against you. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a connotation here of accusation, and that was, the rabbis ran with that to the point where, where they talk about Satan. Satan they refer to as kategor, that is the, the prosecuting attorney. And it literally is the term for a prosecutor, mm -hmm. right? There, there's the uh, defense attorney and there's a prosecutor. And so in rabbinical thought, uh, Satan is not just the enemy, which he is, and an adversary, which he is, but he's also the prosecutor standing before God and doing kind of what he did in the story of uh, Job, saying, well, okay, he serves you, but you only did good to him. Now, now harm him and see what happens. Mm -hmm. But but Kategor, that is... Um, uh, it's actually a Greek word, kategor. Uh, it's the Greek word for a prosecutor. It's like you would say in America, the, the district attorney. Mm -hmm. um, the kategor, the, the, the enemy, is, um, is, is this almost like God is, not almost like God is standing, or Scott is sitting on his throne, and, and there's two different angels before him. There's the prosecutor, and then there, the accuser, that is, and then there's the defense attorney. Mm -hmm. uh, and we actually have that in Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1. And there, Joshua the high priest, or Yehoshua. Mm -hmm. Then he showed Yehoshua the high priest standing before the Malach Yehovah, the angel of Yehovah, and Satan standing at his right hand as an enemy against him, as a Satan against him, which might mean as an accuser against him. Mm -hmm. Right? So the JPS and the NIV both translate to accuse him. Mm -hmm. That is a possibility here, that it means enemy, but it also means accuser. And uh, in, in Matthew 4 and Luke 4, we're not seeing it in the sense of accuser. I think we're seeing it in the sense of, um, of he's coming to do the test, mm -hmm. similar to what we saw in 1 Chronicles 21. But there is that understanding in, in Judaism, and it, and it comes from this place in the Tanakh, that Satan is not only an enemy, he can also be an accuser, just as we have a letter of accusation by the enemies of Israel. Mm -hmm. In Zechariah 2, 3, 2, it goes on, it says, Yehovah said to Satan, Yehovah rebuke you, Satan. Yehovah has chosen Jerusalem, rebuke you. Is not this man a burning stick snatched from the fire? And, and the, the image we have there is the, that, that Satan comes as the accuser, as the enemy, to say, hey, you've got to punish Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And who stands in Israel's defense? Yehovah does. Amen. There's no intercessor there. There's no intermediary. Yehovah stands up and he says, I rebuke you, Satan. Mm -hmm. You know, you're accusing, I'm going to defend Israel. The judge himself defends Israel. Mm -hmm.